um this is a vlog i'm starting it now i don't know why i also don't know if i'll be able to get any real productive reading done but i need to film something to get my thoughts out or else i'm going to implode i'm really having a good time basically my semester is ending in the next like two weeks i don't even know and um at, you know you know what school does it hates you and it will leave a bunch of shit to the end of the semester throw it all at you and say finish it or your grade will tank i am so overwhelmed and the more i get stressed out with this high school shit the more i doubt myself when it comes to what's gonna happen in university i am so concerned um yeah and like the university i'm trying to go to is the one that i so i got admitted into my first choice university which is great yee but it's one of the best universities in canada and it has a reputation for being really difficult um which is great um like prestige wise that's dope if you can hack it but i am so scared <laughs> i'm just like should i go to like a worse quote-unquote university so that i'll do better but then i know if i don't go to this university that i want to go to i'll regret it but i also am so scared of failing um i also have no idea what i want to do i'm currently going into stem um but i don't actually have any passion for stem <laughs> um so that's just yay yay um but like i don't i don't know i don't know um i can't see myself living past 20 at this point um because i am inching every day closer to offing myself so that's positive um back to what i was saying um i don't know if i'm gonna be able to read a lot this week and that sucks but i'm clearly <laughs> on the edge of a psychotic break so i'm gonna just talk to you like i don't understand how this happened i don't know i don't know maybe i'll read some like manga this week um just to like read something i don't know i'll cross that bridge when i get there anyway um did i say my name i'm bailey I need psychological evaluation. I'm like currently just. Ugh. Ooh, angles, Bailey. This is just beautiful. I have to do some math because I just do. I have this math test tomorrow that's like a government field test. So it's not going to be on my grade unless I like do well. But that's not an option like there's no way i'm going to pass this thing because it has content from the whole year whereas i have forgotten everything that's not in the current unit we're doing because we don't have finals because of the pandemic so like i don't know i only have a few hours until this thing and i also want to sleep so i'm not going to be learning the whole course so i'm gonna film this clip instead okay i never told you what i was reading which is a good way to start vlogs i kind of just had a mental breakdown and left you so i'm gonna tell you what i'm reading i am currently reading the city we became by nk jemison this is an adult fantasy and i'm 30 something pages in and i am thoroughly confused i don't know i feel like i'm too dumb to read this but i'm gonna keep pushing through because as much as I'm confused, I am enjoying it. Like, I'm starting to like it more and more. <laughs> um, I'm on chapter one, technically, because there was this whole, like, prologue thing. Basically, from what I know about this, in this series, cities are alive. <laughs> and there's people who are, like, avatars of this city. And this book takes place in New York. And it's following a few different people who represent different, like, parts of new york i'm sorry i don't really understand how new york works like there's somebody who represents manhattan which is a part of new york is it a sector i don't really know um that's kind of what i've gotten so far again i'm 34 pages in and 
I don't really like synopses. So that's all I can tell you so far. The other book I started today is Color Side the Lines, Stories About Love, edited by Sang Sangu Man Mandana. Sangu Mandana. That's a pronunciation. I'm sorry about that pronunciation. It didn't sound right. This is a collection of short stories about um, interracial love, romance, stuff like that. Um, people of color getting into relationships, meet cutes, that kind of stuff. I'm four stories in, like I'm on the fourth story. I'm enjoying the fourth story. Literally hated the first three. And all I really have to say about this is white people have thousands of shitty stories. And I think that this book currently is just trying to even the playing field a little bit by giving POC horrible stories too. Um, and that sounds so harsh and I'm really not in the mood to sugarcoat it but the first three stories were bad first off one of them was literally how many pages was it because it was three minutes long in the audiobook yeah it was literally two pages like like this is the story like excuse me what that's that's not what <laughs> there's no development who are you just because it's a short story doesn't mean you get to forego any setting character development relationship development you know um or like point like there, there needs to be a rhyme or reason to what i'm reading um the first story which was by Anna Marie mclemore um i hear people rave about this author often i hated the way it was written i don't like flowery metaphorical writing and that's what that was i wasn't that into it and then the third story was just so basic. We have this bitchy popular girl who's bullying the loser kids and they team up and they're going to get revenge. But at the end, they learn that they don't want revenge. They don't want to stoop to her level and be, you know, bad and whatever. <laughs> I hate it because I've seen it like 30 kajillion times. And like speaking as a person of color, um, just because... We haven't really seen people of color in these classic, tropey, kind of trashy storylines. Doesn't mean we need to shove them in there. Just my thoughts. Like, I guess equality is getting shitty stories with people of color, too. Um, like, they were cute. Like, the couple was cute <laughs> at times. And I also related to the one guy. Um, the dude in this couple is Indian and I'm South Asian. And he gets called a terrorist often um, because of his skin tone. And that's something that actually happened to me in grade 11. This guy, who I actually ended up dating for a little bit. I don't know why I did that. He would relentlessly call me a terrorist. So, great. So, I related to that. Um, didn't like anything else about the story, but related to that. Um, well, I did like their relationship. It was cute, but cheesy. The fourth story is about this guy... And, like, everyone has these ghosts. At nine years old, like, an ancestral ghost, you know, starts following you around and becomes, like, attached to you. And this one's really interesting, and I'm actually really enjoying it. But the first three were flops. I actually really anticipated this one, like, last year, which is a red flag, because most books that I anticipate these days ends up end up being, like, a two or one star. So maybe I need to stop, like, being excited for things. Anyways... So yeah, that's what I'm reading. Currently struggling in life and in reading and in everything. <laughs> it's Friday, my dudes, and I just turned in an assignment and I'm gonna go read in the bath with a bath bomb. So I'm excited for that. I don't like the book I'm reading. Um, That's the city we became. I'm 70 pages in, still wildly confused. Don't know if it's worth it because it's taken me 30 years to read. I don't really like it. I don't really want to continue but at the same time i don't want to dnf it because like well it's just gonna sit on my shelf still so i would rather it be read so i'm conflicted i'm gonna keep reading it and see if i can push through um because i want to avoid dnfing it at all costs but we be struggling but i want to go start that bath real quick because i also want to sleep so i've got conflicting desires <laughs> Hello my friends, I finished a book so we're here. Uh, let me talk about it and then we can get into 
I guess other reading. I am going to say a quick apology to this book because I was very harsh to it the last time I spoke about it. I was in a shit mood so that was kind of where that came from but I do kind of stand by what I said anyway. But I finished this book. I listened to it on audiobook and I ended up giving it three stars. Um, The way I rate anthologies is I rate each story and then I average it so this ended up being like a 3.2 so we got a three congrats it broke the three star mark this short story collection focuses on um poc romances and like interracial romances and intersectionality and i really enjoyed that and this had been one of my most anticipated reads of last year i do believe or whenever this came out um so i finally got to it as a person of color it's it was you know fun to read about people who had similar struggles to me something i really liked about this book is that it didn't only focus on black people because i find often when we bring up the diversity conversation we only really talk about black people and black books and black stories which i'm not saying they aren't valuable but other people of color tend to be pushed to the side and i don't really love that just because like you're not really reading diversely if you do that you're just reading black and white books which is not really diverse yes it's more diverse than just reading white books um but it's not i wouldn't congratulate yourself for being the most diverse reader if that's all you're reading in my opinion so i liked this book didn't only focus on those voices and also focused on other people of color such as east asian people and south asian a asian south asian and middle eastern people like i mentioned before there's a lot of intersectionality there are queer stories as well as heterosexual stories what i said earlier in this video about this book about the first three stories i still stand by but as with most grocery collections there are duds in this book and this book just happened to have three duds in a row. <laughs> um, there are more stories throughout this I didn't love but those three just like started off pretty bad for me and I was really scared that I was gonna hate this book so I guess that's like a lesson to learn like don't judge a book by its first 50 pages. I don't know. Um, but I did give two stories in this five stars and one of them was The Agony of a Heart's Wish which was about um, colonial India and it broke my heart. It's about this, this Indian girl who he had this like me cute with this Irish sh soldier <laughs> shoulder I cannot speak today <laughs> but this like me cute but they couldn't be together and the end is really sad but it was really well written really enjoyed that um and then the other one was Yuna and the Wall by Lydia King the other one was by Samir ah Ahmed by the way but Yuma Yuna and the Wall was super adorable as well less sad <laughs> more just cute it's about two kind of outcasts of society coming together on their shared um pain <laughs> and it was just really good all in all I enjoyed this I related to a lot of things especially when it came to interrelational relationships um be them friendships or romantic and especially uh relationships friendship and romantic with white people as a person of color because it is a different experience being white versus be a person of color especially in like the western world i've dated a few white people and i have white people friends and even if they're not trying to be malicious there is this level of ignorance that they have um that i find is kind of a hurdle you have to get over you have to get over because you're constantly having to like educate them if you really care about correcting their language i know a lot of people don't really um i've had a few exes that would say ignorant things and then i would kind of try to correct them and they wouldn't really like to hear that because a lot of people when you try to correct them they take it as you calling them racist even if you're not trying to call them racist trying to point out their racist words you know <laughs> that's kind of a tangent but i did really enjoy um those parts of these stories again with short story collections it really is a toss-up because i don't really like short stories i can't really get connected to the characters but at the same time there is some of them that i do really like so i don't know but yeah i finished this and it's my second read of the year. All in all, could have been worse. So it's always nice when they end up being not terrible. So The City We Became, I'm officially like 100 pages into this. I'm reading this so slow and I'm still kind of lost on it, but I'm like interested in it more. I still want to read this, but I kind of want to read something else before I jump back into this. And the reason being is that if you saw my last upload, I want to do the buzzword reading challenge every month and this month's word is dream and i'm doing it over the whole month not just the first week and i only have strange the dreamer to read for that prompt and i don't want to so i went out and got a book i've had my eye on for a while and that's called the dreamers by karen thompson walker this book takes place in california and there's this illness going around that causes perpetual sleep and our main character may uh wakes up and finds her roommate in this sleep state and i don't want to read the rest of the synopsis because i really don't like doing that 
but basically these people who are in the sleep-like state are displaying like heightened levels of or like unusual levels of brain activity and I don't know what that means. I don't want to read this in synopsis but I do really want to read this so I think I might not DNF this and not like stop reading it but maybe put this down and read this before I jump back into this for the end of the month just because this is really slowing my reading down. I want to have time to finish this by the end of the month so I think I'm gonna do that. I hate school right now. I'm like really busy but I don't really want to do anything. I feel like I can feel the depressive feelings coming on you know like the unmotivation to do anything and like get out of bed and this really isn't a good time for that so we're gonna try and work through that without having to like stay in bed for a month. Um, so that's my current goal is to not fall deep. There's not much else to update you on and I wish I had more to say. I'm just not very interesting, I've kind of realized. Or not much interesting is going on in my life, I guess. But I will update you when I do. Hello. So this vlog is currently only taking place in my bed and that's concerning. Don't look at the lotion. I was trying to moisturize my legs. Anyway, um, I just started The Dreamers in the bath and I'm 22 pages in. So not much to say, but I will say the writing is perfect. Like I said, this book's about like an illness that makes you fall asleep and you get stuck in this perpetual sleep state. And right now where I'm at, only one person has had it and they died. So I don't know if like you always die, but currently it's like sleep that leads to death. And sleep in itself is this eerie and whimsical thing. Like dreaming and sleep is this like not really understood thing that generally has a whimsical feeling to it. So the eerie writing style is just excellent. Like, it, you're not really connected to the characters so far. You kind of just like go between them and kind of float between these characters all existing in this one college dorm hall. And it, it the vibe is so perfect for the concept. And I'm already so impressed. Although I just already can tell that my anxiety about sleeping and death is going to be 100% triggered by this book. But I'm the queen of making bad decisions, so like we're gonna keep going because I am anticipating really enjoying this because I'm already so impressed by the author's writing. <laughs> I don't really have a reading update, but I did want to say I got my emo black nails back, and I'm very pleased. Hi, Ava. Hi. <laughs> What's your reading? Reading <laughs> Six Pros for the third time, actually, so I can annotate it for Bailey. Oh, you're so using that ungodly flower pen for that? <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite pen, leave it alone. Yeah, so hopefully... With the annotations, Bailey will finally read this book because or else I'll be pissed. I promise through the screen I'll do it. <laughs> if she ends up reading this book, I take full credit. Yeah, you deserve it, honestly. <laughs> With how many attempts I've made. Oh, my uniform is just like in the background on my bed. Solid. I'm currently reading The Dreamers. Oh, I never mentioned this to y'all. I never mentioned this. But I was, I started listening to Assassin's Blade yesterday, and I finished it today. I gave it four stars, technically a 4.3, because decimals matter. Um, and yeah, I don't really want to talk about this. But it was good, surprisingly so. Um, do I synopsize Throne of Glass, or do I just assume that at this point people know? There's an assassin, she's very deadly, her name's Selena, she went to prison, she goes out of prison to compete in this king competition competition run by the king as the is prince's champion <laughs> anyway yeah this is the prequel short story collection it was good i've never read it before but i've read like a bunch of the rest of the series i already knew what happened in this book because like that's kind of the nature of reading this series you kind of know what happens in this book before you read it generally speaking it was really sad and i think i'm in shock because i can't feel anything but i felt stuff while reading it it was good surprisingly so i'd call this probably the best book in the series in my opinion even though like my ratings on goodreads won't reflect that because i read the other ones like years ago i don't know when i reread the series those ratings might change probably will or maybe they won't because i'm trash who knows anyway read this now i'm going back to the dreamers 93 pages in i'm liking this and that's all i gotta say we're gonna read and be productive so maybe i'll have more to say later 
Yay. Ava had to go, so it's just me now, but I thought I'd talk about this book because when I picked it up, I didn't realize how similar this would be to reality right now. And I'm convinced that Karen Thompson Walker can see the future or predicted the future because this book was published in January of 2019 and now the pandemic stuff is like eerily similar to this COVID shit. Um, basically, this sleeping plague is a virus. Guess what else is a virus? the corona one and they're like quarantining they're having to wear masks and they like distinctly describe how the skin at the back of your ear is all chapped from the mask and like it's just so eerily similar and like these people making up conspiracy theories that like the government has cooked it up or like they're actors or they're lying about the people who are victims of the virus and it's just so similar to covid and i didn't realize how similar it was going to be i'm not one of those people who like finds it disturbing to read about things like this at a time like this although i know some people do but it is very eerie and i'm very convinced that karen thompson walker knew what was coming because this cannot be a coincidence you know what i mean like this is sketch i'm making up my own conspiracy theory as we speak um she released the virus confirmed no but it's actually kind of cool to read i'm really liking it still um, now, I think earlier I mentioned that we were following college kids. There's actually, like, a pretty big cast of characters now. There's this psychiatrist from Los Angeles who comes to this small, uh, town to help out. There's the college kids still. There's this young family with a newborn baby. There's this professor guy. Um, there's this lunatic guy with two young children. There's a lot of perspectives, and I'm actually kind of enjoying it because you get to kind of drift between them and see the different perspectives. Um, and again, I still think it's contributing to the atmosphere of, like, you know, not really knowing what's going on and the dreamy sort of atmosphere because it's still pretty eerie. Um, so I'm still really enjoying this. I am now over 100 pages in. I'm on page 107, so not much farther in, but, you know, making progress. This vlog is a hot-ass mess, but I'm just gonna roll with it. It's the first vlog of 2021, you know? Nothing ever changes. So I have a quick question. Um, so like I just got rejected by my ex-boyfriend, which is interesting because I broke up with him months ago because he cheated on me. But like the other day, as in yesterday, last night he like texted me. He was like, you know, like I'm really into being friends with you. And like, I wouldn't say that I don't find you attractive, but like another time and place we could be together. And I was like, wait, what? Because like I didn't ask. But <laughs> So it's a still a rejection if they just go out of their way to reject you. And then second note, when we started talking again, I, like, told him we were just friends, and, like, he's been trying to go out with me. The math doesn't check out to me, but I'm deeply insulted. Um, like, who are you? Why you do this? Wait, when did I ask? I never asked you out. So why? Why you reject me? I didn't ask for this. The audacity was there, you know? Definitely audacity, I'll give him that. Aside from my relationship issues, which is a non-relationship, so like my non-relationship issues. Um, I haven't read anything for days, but guess what? My semester's over, which means that I have time. Bad thing is I'm in a really shit mood and being pseudo-rejected um, did not help that. And so, yeah, I don't really wanna read, but I have two books I need to finish reading and that's The City We Became and The Dreamers. And yeah, I wanna finish them by the end of January, like really bad but I don't know if that's gonna happen. I feel like I'll feel like finish The Dreamers because I'm halfway through it, but um, The City We Became is like hard for me to read and I'm only 100 pages in, so we'll see how that works out. But um, that's the plan, Stan. Let's see if I can do that. I think it's the 27th. I don't actually know the date, but I think there's like four or five days left of January. So we'll see what I can do with that. Hi, I haven't talked to you in a hot second, but I finished The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. And there's like 20 minutes till February 1st, so I finished this in January. Go me. I gave this five stars, Um, but I'm confused. Like, I love the writing, the characters I enjoy mostly, and like, I understand their purpose, even if I don't like them. Um, Generally speaking, entertaining. I'm very, very confused about like everything, but in a purposeful way. I'm pretty sure it's on purpose. I'll tell you about it tomorrow. 
Um, but I just want to tell you that I finished it, and now I am very, very tired, ironically. Sleeping doesn't seem like the best thing to do if you're in this scenario, and it's kind of in my mind right now, but I'm going to sleep because I'm going to risk it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okie dokie. Hello. <laughs> it's me. Hi. Let's finish off this vlog. As you can tell, this kind of turned into a January vlog, and I think going forward I'm going to be doing monthly vlogs, at least for the time being. Um, just because as a high school student and as just a teen or person living in this time of coronavirus, um, my life's not very interesting, like, week to week. So there's not much content in weekly vlogs, especially because of school. My reading is very, like, all over the place. Like, I don't have a reading schedule because of school and not knowing when I'm gonna have so much homework. So I'm going to be trying to do a monthly reading vlog for February, which is kind of the same as what January kind of turned into. Just so I tell you, I think I'm doing a full month long or like maybe a month split into two, like that kind of a thing. But I just thought I'd tell you that I think in February I'm gonna be doing one long month long vlog or I'm gonna be doing, going to be doing two vlogs. So like maybe split the month and a half, I don't know. We'll see, we're workshopping it, nothing is set in stone. But I do wanna finish this vlog because it's February now, so we gotta finish it. Anyway, I finished The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker last night with 20 minutes to spare, so it's still a January read. And I gave it five stars. I'm still vaguely confused about this book. And to describe it to you, I don't even know how to. It's like an adult sci-fi dystopia thing. There's this epidemic and it's the sleeping virus that puts you into this deep sleep, but you have a very active mind during it more than like normal. And it kind of affects everyone differently. There's some con consistencies, but mostly like it's very different for people. And even by the end, like I'm not really sure. <laughs> What's going on? I think that's the point. If you go into this expecting answers, you will get none. If you're not one for open-ended things, I would not recommend this because you're not going to get answers for things and that would probably frustrate you. I've gone on and on about this in this video, but I love the writing. It's eerie. It's perfect. I think it's actually written really, really well. So even if you don't like the book, I think you can kind of acknowledge that it's written well. Um, but again, with the characters, we we know them enough, but you don't go too in depth with them. I think it was perfect for the content and the length of the book. I think everything was just done very, very well. Um, you don't really have any main, main characters, but the main character that's noted in like the synopsis, May, is probably my favorite character of the book. She's not like developed more than any of the other ones, but she was the perspective that I was always excited to see. Um, and there's some things in this book that were shocking to me. Um, most notably in regards to May and her storyline, because I was the most invested in hers, but there's other ones too. But the one tab I have in here, I didn't annotate, but I did put one tab in because it made me like gasp and I was almost crying. And I can't give you context, but it's to do with a couple that kind of arises in this book. There's a few couples, but a couple that's kind of like coming to be in this book. And it's not a focus. There is no romantic focus in this book. There are romantic couples because it is kind of falling low peaks into people's lives, but it's not like a romance. But there is a couple like kind of blooming. And I liked that it wasn't like this romanticized, like, oh, trauma brought together soulmates kind of thing. It was more like two confused people coming together barely and like doing physical things with each other because they were the only people, like they, they were the only options. So they were kind of diffusing stress by doing these things. I like that it wasn't really romanticized and like their feelings are kind of confusing and murky and not so passionate and like lovey-dovey as you would see in like romantic stuff. And I feel like in, in a lot of books like the two people stuck together because of the tragedy just fall in love because just because like there's no real purpose to it but i feel like you could see the purpose to them because they clearly weren't really drawn to each other <laughs> they're just kind of together and like the one character stays with the other one because there's like the only that's the only option so they kind of start following them around in a way i don't want to like spoil things because i really think you should go into this like empty-minded but there's this one character whose characterization is so solid and so consistent and I'm so impressed by it. And you can see the little developments as it goes on. And that's where this tab comes in. It's like one of the little developments that has to do with this character and another one. And it's it's really realistic and it's really interesting to read. And I think it makes it more impactful because it's so consistent. So like there's no random stuff coming out of nowhere. But then this character makes a decision near the end that I'm so mad at. Like it fucks me up on the inside because it's like made me sad. But it's so consistent with the characterization up to until, up until this point that I can't even fault it. Like it's, 
it's so in character and it's so well done but i'm still mad it hurt me the decision this character makes but it's so in character that i'm like applauding the author for it like with all the characters development they're still in character and i love it like it's it's so well done but hurts me still if you've read this book I hope you know what I'm trying to communicate. I don't know why I keep saying like one thing I loved because I loved a lot of this. Obviously I gave it five stars, but you were following a bunch of random characters in this town. Um, and I loved seeing how their lives intertwined. Like we, the reader know that these are the characters we've been following, but they don't. They don't realize that these are characters that we've been following as the reader, but you see them popping up in the other people's perspectives. And it's so interesting. It just kind of shows how small the world it is in a way, like seeing how random people impact so many people's lives. It was just so fascinating to read. I think this book was great. I think this is going to be on my 2021 favorites for list, to be honest. I just, I loved it a lot. It was a great way to end the month. And I'm really glad I read this. So that's the dreamers, people. I never finished The City We Became. I think I'm going to drag this into February, but even then I'm probably going to have to like read this over like three months, honestly, because I do have plans for my February reading that don't include this book. And so we'll see what happens with this. I don't know. I just don't, I'm not motivated to read this right now. Anywho, that's been this vlog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next something or other. I'll see you around. I've been Bailey. Bye-bye.